Hey y'all, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. I'm so glad you could be here with me today and welcome if you are new. I am excited to try out a new craft that has seriously taken over YouTube by storm. It is so viral right now. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making a busted canvas with a Halloween theme. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the materials that I'm going to be using today are, I'm going to need a canvas and I just have one of these from the Dollar Tree and I got one in black. So I thought that would be perfect. I also have some Mod Podge and a little brush. In a pinch, I could use some tacky spray, but I'm kind of hoping that I can just use the Mod Podge. I have a, um, this is actually like a piece of, uh, I guess you could call it craft board. And this came, I'm actually reusing this. This came with one of my orders from scrapbook.com and I saved it because I am going to need to put this design on to something a little more sturdy. This is a, an image. I actually used this on one of my last videos. I made this in a little uh, beaded sign um, frame and it was so awesome. So what I did is in design space, I made a square that is the same size as the inside here of my frame, the inside part, not the, not the part of this frame there. And then I put this over it, sized it the way I needed it. And then I flattened it and sent it to my printer with the print thin cut feature. And then I'll just trim this down with my paper trimmer. This is a 110 pound cardstock and I will be placing it here on the craft board that will make a sturdy base. And then I have this particular image here, and this is also from Creative Fabrica. This is a cobweb pattern, like a seamless pattern that I uploaded to Design Space, and we will be using this on the inside of our canvas as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all this cellophane, and this is just that you know, eight by 10. Okay. But on the inside, and this is going to be part of the most important part on the inside, the measurements are six and three quarters by eight and three quarters. This particular image here has been sized to those measurements. So six and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Let's go ahead and cut this. I'm bringing my paper trimmer here. And this is just regular copy paper. And I'm using regular copy paper simply because um, this is going to be adhered to the back of my canvas using Mod Podge. And I didn't want it to be um, too stiff, I guess. And I don't have any scrapbooking paper that I could use. And I did not want to just use basic black vinyl or paint. So I am just trimming this down. And this was using the print and cut feature inside Cricut Design Space. Okay. And while we're at it, I am going to go ahead and cut down the cardstock. So this is 110 pound cardstock, and this is the Recollections brand. You can purchase this at Michael. You can purchase this on Amazon. And we're just taking off these edges. And I'm using my new. Um, paper trimmer and scoring board. And this, I have to say, this is a pretty neat combo, um, especially the fact that I can, um, I can trim, I can score, it folds in half. Everything is just pretty awesome with this little 
this little um, item here. I just love it. Okay, so we will be needing this in a bit. The first thing that I want to do is I am going to, well, I'm going to move the little haunted house out of the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking Mod Podge and I'm going to put it on the inside of this back side of my canvas. And then we're going to put that paper down and we're going to let that hang out for a little bit while we get the rest of the stuff ready. So I'm just going to paint just like so. I think I'm going to focus more on the edges. So I don't know if you have seen the, these busted canvases. I saw one a while back on the Makers Gonna Learn um, website, or I guess YouTube channel. And I thought, well, that's a quite interesting idea. And I just thought, well, I guess I'm gonna have to try it. I have done quite a few reverse canvas projects. So I thought instead of doing one of those, I could try out this new one. I do encourage you to try it yourself and um, see what you think. I'm actually trying to get a lot of crafting done before I have to start packing up all my craft space. I call it my little crafty corner. And of course my family makes fun of me for that, but okay, so this is very, um, very well adhesive. And then I'm literally just going to place this down in. And I think the, the good thing is I sized this so that it would fit pretty much exactly. Instead of using my ginormous brayer, I'm going to use my scraper because I just want to make sure that this is perfectly flat and that there are no wrinkles in the paper. I'm going to let this hang out for a little bit and then I think if need be, I can always hit it with my heat gun. Okay, so this feels flat. I don't feel any wrinkles. Okay, well, while we let this hang out to dry, let me go ahead and start doing the next piece. Okay, so like I said, this is just that craft board that I saved from one of my packaging. And to be honest, I am not sure if I should use the tacky spray and just coat this really well. Let's see what it says. It says permanent all-purpose spray adhesive. This is probably something I should do outside. <laughs> uh, protect your workspace from overspray. Spray eight to 12 inches away from the surface to be bonded. Spray in an even coat. So it really, I don't know. I, I'm wondering if I should give it a go. So let me, let me go and spray this. I'll spray this outside and then I will come back and we'll put it on here because I think that'll be better as far as dry time. If for some reason it doesn't seem to stick very well, I can always come in and mod podge this onto the back. Back and let's go ahead and get this down. Now I'm going to do my best to get this into a corner because I think that this will make it easier when I go to trim it. So if you see them online, a lot of people use the flat canvases, not the stretched canvases. And I'm not sure that this is going to work. Yeah, I'm not feeling like this is going to work. I'm not sure what, um, maybe, maybe I am just really don't know what to do. Uh, instant bond dries clear acid free. Maybe I took too long to put it down. Okay. Well, 
If you know the secret to this tacky spray, I would love for you to tell me down in the comments so that I can use it instead of feeling like um, I wasted some money. I actually thought what I was buying was like a repositional, repositionable spray um, adhesive, which is what I needed. And unfortunately, it is not repositional. It is permanent. So it just sits in my craft drawer. And um, I saw it today and I thought, oh, maybe I should try that. So if you know the secret, please share. I would love to learn from you. Well, I managed to actually keep this pretty neat. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this adhered down. And I will probably need to go wash my hands, which will be fine, except for the fact that they are, they're so dry. Oh, goodness. Okay. And I'm just going to use my brayer here. Now, I guess you could use, um, you could use um, adhesive, you know, um, dot runner or tape runner. You could use red line tape. All right, that is well adhered. I am going to very quickly wash my hands so that I can move on to the next part of the project and I will be right back. Okay, definitely so much better. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm thinking this might be a little too thick. Let's just give it a go. I can always buy more blades. I just don't want to wear it out too soon. So, okay. Okay, all right. That, that is impressive. All right, well, um, I don't know that I would do this a lot, but definitely faster than my true control knife for sure because that was gonna be my other option. Yeah, I definitely would not, um, I would not do this a lot with, with this blade, but it definitely did a great job cutting that. Okay, so this is going to go on the back side. So let's see, I think I'm going to have to hit this with my heat gun just for a few minutes. I don't think it needs very long. Okay, so that was definitely a good choice. And it's, you know, it's not hard. It's still pliable, which is great, but it is dry, which is gonna be fantastic for the next step. I also gave this um, a tiny blast of heat on both sides so that it wouldn't warp, but just to make sure that this was also good and dry. Next thing that we're gonna do, we are going to cut some slits in the canvas itself. And there is no right or wrong reason, or right or wrong way to do this. I'm gonna go straight down the middle, but I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna go straight down and I'm going oh I don't know about an you know about an inch I want to turn it this way so I can find the middle there I think these first two cuts are probably the most um, I don't want to say important but for me they're the ones I want to get pretty um, you know, and they're not perfectly straight. I will tell you that. But I do want them, you know, in the middle. This is how, you know, we're going to be busting that out. Oh, that's a pretty little star shape right there. So now what I want to do is I literally just want to, mm, how do I want to do this? Because I don't want to cut my finger. So I'm just cutting diagonally from the center 
And then I'm going to go back the other way. So I'm just going to make four of these. Okay, I think that is good. Now, I will tell you, like, if you look right here, you know, my cut is not through that corner, but that's okay. So if your cuts are a little um, misaligned or if they're a little jaggedy and they're, or maybe they're not quite as perfect horizontal, vertical, or diagonal as you would like, it is okay. And you don't necessarily need to worry about that in particular. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is, and I'm just really waiting on my glue gun, is we are going to start getting this together. This is really a super quick craft. One of the best things about this project so far is this interior paper doesn't have a particular direction to it. If this particular paper here was directional, I would need to be mindful of how I put this down into um, my canvas. Now this one here obviously is directional, but whether I lay it down, you know, this way or this way, when I turn it over, it will still be right side up and this won't matter. Let's just go ahead and start getting some glue down. I'm going rather quickly because we all know how hot glue is. It's pretty quick to do its thing. All right, and then super quick. Ooh. That is still quite hot. Is I'm going to lay this down in the back here and I'm going to press really, really well. Okay, so now that I have that all in there, before we get to the front, I'm going to put a bead of hot glue all the way around. So kind of like holding this in, almost like if it was being framed and I had the little tabs. I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling that in. Okay, we'll just go along this side here. And this is mainly just to hold this back in place. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm just gonna let this sit here for just a second while all of this glue just kind of settles. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and do a mid-craft cleanup. And then I will be right back and we will take care of the front and this project will be done. Okay, so now we are going to take care of the front side. And this is where the magic happens, okay? So you are going to need, you're definitely going to need your glue gun. Now, in a pinch, you can do some E6000. And if I need to, I will switch to this, but I would like to actually work with the hot glue first simply because I have it out. And I don't know about you, but anytime I open the E6000, it just seems to like, keep coming out and going everywhere. So I kind of want to hold off on that for just a moment, but let me get some more glue sticks because I do think I will need more. I'm going to go ahead and work with these longer ones, need be. All right, so what you do is, you see all these flaps that we cut a little bit ago? Look at that. Look how amazing, that is so striking. I can't even get over it. All right, so you're gonna pull back one of your flaps and one at a time, and you can go as far or not as far as you want, and you're gonna curl it around your finger just like that, okay? So we're just gonna curl it up like that, like almost like you were rolling your hair back in the day, you know, big old hot rollers. Back in the day, 
who remembers those? Or am I um, am I dating myself because <laughs> I don't even know if they make hot rollers anymore, but maybe they do. So then we're just gonna put some glue right along here. You're putting it on that inside and then you're going to pull this out here and you're just gonna hold it until you think it's set. Okay, so this does take a minute or two to take care of the front, but that'll give us some time to chat. And then you can see here, so see it's glued down and that is gonna be amazing. Like, just like that, it's amazing. This is awesome. Okay, uh, I would like to give a triple A plus gold star to whoever came up with this busted canvas uh, idea. I honestly am just, I don't know who the original person is, but you guys, whoever you are, is genius. So like I said, I first saw it on the Maker's Gonna Learn channel and I just thought it was fantastic. So I don't know if you can tell, but like where my, um, where my watercolor image ends, having that black square printed at, like putting it on top of that black square before I did the print and cut, see how it's very seamless and I didn't have to paint anything. So I didn't have to paint, it was all good to go. And we're just going to keep rolling these like this. And we will be revealing this design. Okay, so we're getting close to being done. What I'm kind of doing is setting it down, but then kind of rolling it out so that I don't have to put my fingers too much in the hot glue but it really is not super hot i'm so glad that i chose to do regular copy paper you know just printer paper for this layer because this is very very pliable um between the mod podge and the the uh, printer paper super pliable like i'm not having to fight with it really at all and um, the front is already covered in black, so I don't have to paint it. Now, if I were to do this for like Thanksgiving or Christmas, I would have to do something to the front of those canvases because, you know, those would be white, unless I chose to use a black one again. And I would say, you know, on those, if you're gonna do something and you want different colors, just try and use a um, thin, watered down, um, you know, don't put the paint on super, super thick. Like you can always do an extra coat, but I would water it down and make it pretty thin. And that way it's easy for you to cut and easy for you to mold. So, that's just my thought on it. Um, I'm sure really and truly, I I mean, I don't know that you could, I don't know that you could mess it up. I mean, maybe, maybe you could mess it up, but I don't really know how that could happen. And this is, this is a pretty easy craft. Um, you could even cover the front with iron on vinyl. You could cover the back with iron on vinyl here instead of copy paper. Like, wow, I could sit here and come up with a, with, you know, six ways to Sunday, how to make this work with the supplies that you have. But um, between the reverse canvas and the busted canvas, I'm telling you, these are awesome. And you could even use 
Um, so the craft board that I used was just, you know, from my packaging, but you could use cereal boxes. You could just use what you have. You, the ones that I've seen online, they've, they've bought the flat canvases and then they have glued the flat canvas to this part right here. But I kind of like the idea of just using, you know, some recycled materials and then fitting it, you know, cutting it to fit. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, the more, the more cuts you have, all right, the more cuts you have, the more star pieces you would have. So this is actually finished. It needs a ribbon, but I only have a thin, black ribbon. I don't have a big black one that I am aware of. I could check my stash really fast, but essentially this is done. And you can see how having that colored square really made the difference on the inside. You could put colored stripes of paper and then put things. I mean, you could go to town here on the inside. I could think of a ton of ways. So there it is. You just need some hot glue and some paper, essentially. But you could use vinyl. You could even use ribbon on the inside, gluing down ribbon. That would be kind of fun. Now, on the back, you know, mine is this craft board. And so I could always print another copy of this particular pattern paper right here and then just put it here on the inside to cover this. But, and I may do that off, off camera, I may do that. So I think I'm just gonna wait. And if I have ribbon, I will make ribbon so I can uh, hang it. Otherwise, it, I'll just prop it up uh, on the counter next to some candles. And I think that looks really good. I just love it. And um, so I will link this picture down in the description, this is from Creative Fabrica, this is from Creative Fabrica, and then of course this is from Dollar Tree. So nice, easy, affordable, um, very affordable. So, okay, well, this is today's project. I'm super excited how it came out, and I hope that this is something that inspires you to make some different kind of crafts for your fall and Christmas season. If you found it, interesting, helpful, or inspiring in any way. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video with your crafty friends. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.